Every kid, every man's dream is to be able to chip wood. <laughs> You just got caught in the act of being too excited about a wood chipper. Okay. There was a beaver on property the other day, and I was like, No way, beaver! Not today! It's my wood to chip! <laughs> Morning, YouTube family. Okay, we had the most insane windstorm last night. It sounded like we were gonna lose our house. And actually the first thing I said when I woke up this morning was, did our house move over a couple of feet? Because I can't even imagine how windy it was at the ocean for Philip's parents last night because I don't think I've ever heard the wind, even in some of our hurricane warnings, as bad as it was last night. When we moved in to this four acre property that we bought, you know that we bought this house completely abandoned and that we really had to focus on inside, getting some things basically functional for our family before we could really start working on the outside. But that being said, when you're working on an inside project as big as renovating an entire house, you also know that the things that you wanna do outside are going to take a long time to actually like come into fruition, like raising up animals to be a certain size or starting a garden, planting, fruits and vegetable gardens, flower gardens, you know, things that are gonna take sometimes years to establish, like our orchard, for example. Ooh. Going to go in the shed so I can talk to you without the wind. Holy moly. I did have a face shield on earlier because it is some kind of windy today. Okay, we're gonna tuck by the shed. So currently right now that we're basically have most of the main functions done in the house. We still have lots to do inside, as well as projects that we wanna do on the outside that are kind of like interior outside projects, if that makes sense. But aside from doing all of those, we have been working on doing a lot of work on the outside of our homestead. So currently right now we have mud and pole village because we're working on fencing, we're working on creating different areas for different animals and different gardens and different things. And so right now it looks like we have an absolute mess going on on the exterior. But please hold on with me. You're going to see this property transform. And although we're in the mess stage right now, when this all comes together, it's going to make so much sense. And you're going to totally look back and think, wow, all that mud and mess and pole village and all the you know disastrous stuff that we have going on and bits and pieces here and there are all going to take shape. And it's going to kind of come together basically all at one time. And it's going to be epic. Not to mention, in just a couple of weeks, we're starting our barn build, and it's gonna get even messier before it gets better. So in the midst of all the mess, keep in mind that the reason we bought four acres for us to have here was because we wanted to have animals. We didn't want to just have a land of grass. Our purpose of moving here was so that we could actually be more sustainable, grow our own food, which we're getting to this year, and do things on our property, like have these animal structures, keep the animals that we wanna keep, and do a lot of projects on this property. A year from now, we're gonna look back on this, and we're gonna have the barn bill, and all the animals will have their fencing and structures. We're gonna have an amazing garden for our fruits and vegetables, in addition to other gardens that we'll be planting down the road. And we're gonna have our barn bill, and just so many amazing things on this property, and it's all going to look amazing in the end. So dying off a little bit of grass right now for the bigger picture is so worth it. So today, Philip is over on the other side of the property. You might be able to hear him. He's working on a big project on the property. So while I'm working on finishing the bathroom and doing a bunch of interior stuff this week, Philip is outside tackling some insanely huge projects. But I wanna show you just a kind of an idea of what we're working on on the outside. You saw back in the fall that we started to drop some trees and Philip has most of them cleaned up. We have had another, look at this massive tree fell in one of our recent storms. So it's hard to see past all that. But this area down here goes down to our brook and our property goes way back there and it goes way back behind. And I'll show you kind of in lower, where we have more of like our marshy area. My beautiful little stream that I've shown you that I love is just back there. And this whole area off of behind where that blue shed fell down in the storm. 
So this whole entire area is going to get cleared and it's gonna go way back there, probably right to the water's edge on that side and it's gonna open up way back this way and all of this eventually will be another pasture area. We did a lot of research and calling around to find out how much it would cost us to have someone come and do that and to do that like right on our property, us not have to do that work and it's gonna be like $20,000. And so we're gonna tackle this ourselves, like we do all of our other projects. I'm gonna show you, we're gonna have so much more of an opening here. And especially because we're doing animals, but we don't know, and we haven't even explained everything that we're gonna be doing on this property. Some things we know we're gonna do, some things we don't even know that we might add along the way. But we have a lot of trees to clear and a lot of tree mess to pick up now that all of the storms have knocked everything down. Look at what I just found on the ground walking. I just found, a really cute old glass jar. Oh, there's a little chip out of it. Just sitting on the ground here. How cute. Coming inside. Here, in this area here is gonna be horse pasture, and, or at least a section of area where horses can go. And then the barn is gonna run all along this side over here. So you can see this is where our wood shelter had fallen. And we have all these trees behind and we own a lot of property back behind there. Some of these trees are gonna stay. Many of these trees are gonna go. And I'm gonna take you over to where Philip's working right now and show you what he did over on that side because he did a lot of work yesterday and he's doing a lot of work today. And this is just gonna show you partly how we're gonna take advantage of cutting down all these trees. Not only will we be cutting our own firewood so we can be more sustainable with heating our house, because you know we heat solely with wood, but we want the wood chips for the animal areas, for the horse pasture, or for horse paddock and horse round pen, you know, flooring in the greenhouse, things like that. Hey, let me show you. So Philip has cut down all of these trees. This area is going to be our vegetable garden. It's gonna go all the way around surrounding the greenhouse and cut it to the, tie it to the top of our orchard. This is around the corner. <laughs> all chick away. And this area back here, where our bees are gonna go in their own little bee area. Our bees are gonna have their own little tucked in area near our orchard because we wanna have the pollinators all near where our apples and pear trees are. We hope to add some more fruit trees this year, but they're not as easy to find here in Nova Scotia, so we'll have to probably do a pretty good drive for them. And then this hill is also, our orchard hill is also gonna be made use of because we are going to be making two chicken tractors because we are getting a hundred meat chickens. And we're gonna be moving the tractors up and down this hill all the late spring and summer growing our meat birds. And that will fertilize our orchard really well. We're gonna have our garden surrounding the greenhouse around here up to kind of the point of the orchard here, probably the edge of the house. And so Philip's making way and opening all this up for us to have we have the most beautiful sun on the property in this area, which is why we put the greenhouse where we did and direction the way that we did. So we were fortunate enough this week to be sent a wood chipper by Super Handy. I'm gonna tell you some information about the actual wood chipper, but Philip has never been more excited about a new toy on the property. And it's just the thing we needed to be able to make this idea we have of taking down our trees, fixing all the remnants from the fallen trees from the storms and like making our wood chips and everything come into fruition. So I'm super excited about this. So this is a pretty super handy wood chipper. I had to, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's actually amazing because it's a compact size. It's not gonna take up too much room for us to store. It's seven horsepower. It's mulching all of our two and three inch size branches, which is the portions that we aren't gonna turn into firewood. 
And I think so far it's absolutely a great addition to our homestead. So thank you so much to Super Andy for sending this amazing gift for Philip and I. Philip is having so much fun. I don't think I'm even going to get a turn on this in the next week or two until the novelty wears off because I mean, what man doesn't want a wood chipper? The wheels on it are rubber, so they're great. We've been like moving it. We're just parking it in the greenhouse right now and bringing it over because he's working in this area. I think his first task right now is he's going to create us a wood chip mulch floor for the greenhouse because we are going to build our shelving and start our starter seeds in there in just a couple of days. And then we're going to be able to transport this chipper because it is so compact, roll it down our orchard hill over to the horse round pen and start mulching all of the trees that have fallen from the storm over near that area so we can put bedding in the horse round pen. Help with some of this mud, get some of that cleaned up before we start our barn project. I've only been chipping for about an hour straight of chipping. This chipper has been flawless and this pile <laughs> is glorious. <laughs> it's big. Literally my favorite item that I have on the homestead right now. <laughs> I'm enjoying it maybe a little bit too much. When we were at the old house, there was no reason for us to have a wood chipper. I mean, we didn't have any trees to fall in storms. We didn't, weren't doing our own wood. We weren't doing any of this. So we've never had an excuse to get a wood chipper. And because we have all of this to do, Having a fun tool like this makes it that much more enjoyable to be out here. So I'm pretty sure you're gonna throw some headphones on and you're just gonna work your way around oh, the yeah, property. I'm gonna be wood chipping. <laughs> Thing I love about being able to make our own wood chips is often when you buy wood chips at the garden centers there's dyes and coloring and stuff in them and you don't ever really know where the wood all came from and so especially if we're going to use this for groundwork in any of our say like our chicken coop run or if we're going to use it in the bottom of the round pen or something we don't have to worry about what the contents of our wood chips are because we're making them completely eco here off of our own trees on our property and we don't use any sprays or any chemicals around our property at all because we do everything in mind of the fact that we have the animals. So earlier in the video, we made a funny joke about the fact that Philip versus wood chipper. <laughs> We're gonna show you why it's Philip versus wood chipper on the homestead this week. It's a battle. It's a battle. It's an adorable battle though. We always welcome any wildlife that comes on our property. I mean, that's why you have acreage, right? We even have fallen trees down by the brook. Philip will be wood chipping down here as well. Oh, yeah. I know. I Walking around the property right now, I'm just getting giddy with laughter, with joy. Because I'd be like, whoa, I can wood chip this! I can wood chip that! It's almost a wood chip. Our brook is really high right now. You can see, just to flow in. And then you see why there's been a beaver so close to our brook. Ooh, hi birds. Around. So wet. Everything is wet right now half frozen, half wet. But Philip discovered that we have had a visitor. This is all beaver chewed. Oh, this chewed. is all beaver chewed. This is beaver chewed. This is beaver chewed. Look at the ends here. It was beaver chewed by, like I'm 5'7.1. <laughs> it was beaver chewed by the tallest beaver ever. Just oh kidding. Oh my goodness. There was, the snow bank was up this high. So it was on top of the snow bank, chewing away. And then there's other limbs. <laughs> in the forest that I've seen. We're gonna have to set up the one of the cameras and see if we can catch the beaver in action. Yeah, I, gotta... I mean, he is making a mulch pile. I wonder if it took him less than an hour because it's Phil versus Phil and timing and making wood chips now. <laughs> so we can see a little trail Phil said he's been making his way this way to kind of that rock that Philip and I sit on on the water's edge sometimes. He's been making his way through with it. Philip keeps finding sticks that he's chewed and left along the way back heading through to the water's edge. Oh, Philip found another one. I literally pulled this from the beaver's mouth. <laughs> we had a teeth off. I grabbed one end, he grabbed the other. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm gonna throw this in the wood chipper just to show this beaver that <laughs> you don't be coming around my property chipping my wood. <laughs> Your little wood chipper. It's your job. Yeah. It's your job. You chip off. <laughs> Beaver.